Well, hello again, you rascally AP environmental science students. Uh, today, we're going to zero in on topic 1.8 from Unit 1. And our primary goal is to be able to explain, keyword, how solar energy is acquired and transferred by living organisms. This is essentially uh, the beginnings of our food chain discussion, which we'll spend a few days on. Uh, the reading that accompanies this set of notes is pages 72 through 75. So a quick look uh, from that Miller textbook in chapter 3, section 3.3. All right, so we've already talked about uh, producers, a synonym, autotrophs, and their essential function in ecosystems. Uh, so we're talking about plants and algae, um, and they are essential uh, much like other species are also essential, but they're essential, especially in this capturing of solar energy process. So uh, as many of you guys already know uh, about, you know, in general, photosynthesis um, is where plants and algae take energy from the sun, use that energy to create food for themselves, which is then able to pass up the food chain uh, and so on. Okay, so we've got to remember we're for this particular set of notes, topic 1.8, we're really talking about our producers, plants, and algae. So, uh, photosynthesis. For AP Environmental Science, what do you need to know about photosynthesis? Well, first of all, you need to understand what the process is, why it's important. So, it is a biological process, so it does require cells and special structures in uh, plant cells allow them um, to take energy from the sun, also referred to as radiant energy, or thermal radiation, uh, transform that energy, or to really they actually use that energy um, to create sugar molecules, which we'll just re kind of refer to as food. Okay, so again, photosynthesis is a cellular process in plants and algae. They use energy from the sunlight to assemble molecules from other materials like carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so energy captured by plants through photosynthesis is used by the plant or sometimes transferred to organisms that eat the plants. So that's how food gets into ecosystems in the first place. For us, food, its primary role is to provide us with energy. Okay. That energy came originally from sunlight. So everything you eat, whether it's plants or animals, all that energy originated with, as sunlight. Okay, so um, now what do we need to know about the chemical process of photosynthesis? In this class, we're not going to dig into what happens inside cells. Okay, we do at least need to know the inputs and outputs of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide, which is a gas in our atmosphere, requires water, okay, which plants bring up uh, through their roots, and radiant energy, which we refer to as sunlight, although we do have the ability to create uh, light bulbs that will also work, so growing lights. And plants, cellular processes are able to take the carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen and carbon dioxide and water to assemble molecules. So uh, this right here is what we refer to often as glucose. It's a variety of sugar, okay? Um, and that is something that plants and animals can use to power their cells. Uh, we get water as a byproduct. So plants transpire water, humans, when we breathe out, we breathe out, as you know, probably carbon dioxide, but we also breathe out water vapor. Um, Okay, and then also oxygen. So the oxygen that we breathe in is a, a secondary byproduct. It's actually a waste product of photosynthesis. Okay, so um, carbon dioxide and water combine carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to form glucose, water, and oxygen. And that glucose is where the energy from the sunlight is stored. And that can later on become food for the plant or for animals that eat plants. Okay, so we need to know what photosynthesis is and what types of materials uh, 
are needed for photosynthesis and what does photosynthesis create. Okay, now we need to just know the same essential info about cellular respiration. And the nice thing is, it's just the reverse of photosynthesis, essentially, except we're not giving off light. Okay, so cellular respiration is also in the cells of all living organisms, where the chemical energy that's captured in photosynthesis, so that chemical energy, again, we are using glucose as sort of our reference molecule there. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. It's not always just glucose. But we're taking that glucose that's created through photosynthesis. That is a molecule that stores that energy, and we're going to call that our food. Okay? The plants use some of it for themselves. They don't do photosynthesis to feed other things. They do photosynthesis so they can make their own food. Okay? Whatever's left over inside the plant can then become food for other organisms. Okay, so that energy is used for biological processes, creating new cells, reproduction, movement, growth, etc. But that chemical energy came originally, again, from sunlight. It just was used to build these molecules that store that energy for us. And then we can eat that food and access that energy. Okay, so uh, glucose, water, and oxygen, you notice that is the, what, what is created from photosynthesis is the inputs of cellular respiration, okay? And we get carbon dioxide, water, and some energy out of the process. So one of the things we want to note here is our definition of sustainability is relying on Earth's natural cycles to indefinitely provide what we need, okay? So what we have is a cycle. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide and water to create glucose, water and oxygen. Cellular respiration uses glucose, water and oxygen to create carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so we have a nice cycle of material. So we'll never run out of carbon, oxygen and hydrogen within that cycle because it comes in and it goes back out and it comes in and it goes back out. The only thing we need constant input of is energy. Okay, um, we will touch on that energy input process later um, and why it's important. But as long as we got sunshine, we got photosynthesis and respiration, a sustainable long-term process. All right. Now, um, a quick tangent here. There are some weird ecosystems and some weird organisms for which sunlight is not actually the uh, initial source of energy. Okay. So deep ocean um, areas where there is no sunlight, how is that energy getting into those ecosystems in the first place? Well, uh, some producers or autotrophs actually, instead of using sunlight, they use chemicals from these hydrothermal vents, um, hydrogen sulfide, in fact. Okay, and so uh, this is similar to photosynthesis in that we have producers that are initially in charge of bringing energy into a system that can then be passed up the food chain. But rather than that energy source being sunlight, it is chemicals. So it is referred to as chemosynthesis. So chemicals replace sunlight as a source of energy. So kind of a cool, uh, robust ecosystem that has a totally different way of bringing energy in. Um, and that is our in our deep ocean, really dark areas, we get these big, like flourishing ecosystems clustered around these hydrothermal vents uh, where we would normally think that there couldn't be life. Kind of an interesting thing. All right. So we're, we've got a couple minutes left. We're going to talk about ecosystem productivity. So we have a term called gross primary productivity. So primary productivity is referring to our producers, our plants, and algae in an ecosystem. So how much energy can plants capture and assimilate in a given period of time? Now, this is dependent on climate and soil quality, et cetera. But we can actually calculate that total amount of energy that plants bring in over a given period of time. That is the gross primary productivity. So if we have plenty of water and sunlight and good soil nutrients, we can have high gross primary productivity. Okay. Now, the net primary productivity, and these are two really important terms, is how much of that energy ends up being available as food. Okay. So remember, plants use some of that energy for themselves to power their own cells to grow, reproduce, repair damaged tissues, etc. Okay. Now, some of that energy that plants bring in 
and store in their molecules is in the plant itself, part of the tissues. So the net is that part, that part that's left over after the plants have used some of that energy for themselves. So, uh, and that gets stored in the plant. And so we, we define net primary productivity as how much plants grow in a given period of time, how much energy is stored in the plants. Okay, so the rate at which organic material is actually incorporated into plant tissue. So we refer to that as biomass. Biomass is the anything that makes up living tissues that we can weigh. Okay, so we can think as the net primary productivity as the gross, the total amount brought in, minus what the plants use for themselves. Okay, what's available as food to go up the food chain is the net primary productivity because the plants use some for themselves. That's no longer available to other things. The net primary productivity is what is left over. And that takes us to the end. Hasta mañana.